I'm John Strohmeyer, and this is the Five Star Council Podcast. The market for legal services is shifting, and lawyers who don't adapt will be left behind. This podcast gives you a competitive edge in today's market by sharing the client service lessons you probably didn't learn in law school or in law practice. Let's start the show. Hey, five-star listeners. Before we start, I want to tell you about our amazing sponsor, Smith AI. Smith AI is a virtual receptionist service for small businesses with a specialty in working with solo and small law firms. I signed up with them within weeks of starting my firm because they are affordable for even the smallest solo practice. Their friendly receptionists respond to potential clients in Spanish or English, screen and schedule new leads, and can even take payments. And now they're answering calls 24 hours a day. So even when you're asleep, they're still working. Even beyond the phone, they've got live agents and chat bots ready to capture leads on your website by text and by Facebook Messenger. Smith's friendly gatekeepers can staff your front line so you can work uninterrupted. You can finally have the peace of mind that while you're working, you're not missing out on future work. Plans start at just $70 a month for calls and $100 a month for chats. Smith AI is offering a free trial, and our podcast listeners get an extra $100 discount code with promo code 5 star. That's F I V E S T A R. Sign up and learn more at www.smith.ai. Don't let another day go by. Try Smith AI. And here we are. This week, we are going to be talking about the difference between your client experience and client service. Why? Well, Five Star Council is all about how we can operationalize and make your client service better. It doesn't mean that we don't care about client experience, but we do need to make sure that we are talking about the right things because if we start describing the wrong things or get confused about what we're doing, it's going to be hard for us to not only improve service, but also know that we're improving the right thing. So today we're going to be focused on what's the difference between client service and client experience, and we're going to think about what we can do to operationalize that service. So we're lawyers. We want to start with good definitions of things. Client service, we've talked about this before, and we'll go back through it again in more detail. Client service is how a business delivers its physical and technical products. So it's everything that a business does in a broader sense to provide an experience to the client. So it's connected. It has to be connected to client experience. You can't have a client experience without client service. So the client experience then is everything that the client receives from the business. So it's important to recognize that client experience is going to be a smaller subset of everything that a business does because the business is going to do a lot of things that the client doesn't necessarily see to deliver that product. You know, payroll, for example, it's important. There's no way that a business is going to deliver its product if it doesn't pay its people. So knowing what that business has to do, that's part of the underlying delivery. Now, of course, it's not physical or technical product, but I want you to be thinking about that in the business is going to do a lot of things and keeping employees happy is going to be part of how they're delivering that service to their clients. And once it gets across the line, the client's going to receive experience. So again, the differentiation we're going to have is client experience is what a client receives from a business. All the entire realm of experience is both before a sale and after an engagement, you know, both sides of that line. The service delivered by the business, it's going to be everything that the business does to deliver. Specifically, I'm thinking about service as how do we deliver our physical and technical product. If you want to branch out and think even more broadly, it's what are we doing to deliver to a client? And then experience is what they're receiving from us. So it's not unimportant experience. Experience is important. We want to think about it, but we don't want to get confused with things that aren't part of service. So a lot of times what I'll hear are things like, oh, well, you know, we have a great drink menu. Or, you know, I think I've told the story before about how a few years ago I was at the Lawyered Forward conference put on by Mike Whalen. And one of the attorneys there was so proud that whenever a client came in, they would ask what they what that client wanted to drink. And if they didn't have it, well, they would run out to the store and they would get it and they would always have it in stock when that client came back. And just sitting there right then, I could just scratch my head and say, well, that's not a bad thing to do. You're obviously making it better. That's improving some client experience. But what's the difference? You know, you've improved experience 
but you're a lawyer. You know, people aren't coming to you for a drink menu or the fact that they can get whatever drink you want. If you were to go to a Four Seasons, if you ask for a Pepsi there, well, the contract for soft drinks is usually with Coke. You're not going to get a Pepsi and it doesn't matter how nice you ask or how much they want to please you. They've got a certain number of things on inventory right now. And Pepsi really isn't going to be one of those things. So making sure that you are focused on the right things and focusing on the things that you should be to deliver your services. That's what we want to do. So we're going to take it back, start again with a broad description of what a business does. Well, businesses go out, and this is not just law firms, not just professional services, but every business has some product to sell. That product is a mix of a physical product, a technical product, and then that's service component. So we'll, we'll go back and say service component, physical component, technical component. Lawyers are focused on that technical component. But every business is going to have those three components wrapped up in everything that they sell. So when we've got our product, people are coming to us for our technical components. What we can do, you know, congealed knowledge that we have figured out how to do things better for clients so that we can save them time so they don't have to learn to do what we know how to do. Sure, we've got a license that makes certain things off limits for some of our clients, but there are lots of things as lawyers that we just know how to do better and we can get done for our clients faster and quicker than they could themselves. And that's part of the reason you know, they come to us and pay for us. It's not just that they can't go form an LLC with the Secretary of State. It's they don't want to spend the time monkeying around learning how to do it. They just want it done. So every business is going to be primarily, is going to focus on one of those three types of components. So a physical product business, you're going to that business because you are out of some physical thing or you need access to some physical thing. If you're hungry, you're going to go to a restaurant. Primarily, that's going to be a physical component business. If you're out of screws, you're going to go to Lowe's and buy some screws. If you're out of paint, you're going to go to the paint store and buy a gallon of paint. But if you're facing a legal issue, you're not going to go down to the legal store and pick up a gallon of legal. It doesn't make sense there. You go to lawyers to solve a specific problem. And that's where we move over out of the physical component business into the technical component business. When you go to technical components, those technical businesses, you're focused on what problem are you solving? And it's something where that problem really only needs to be solved once. If you're coming to a lawyer, if you need a divorce, for right now, you only need one divorce. You don't need two divorces from the same person. You may need another different divorce later if you get married and or remarried, and then you need a second divorce. But if you get it, you know, once you've got that divorce completed, that issue is completed. That problem is resolved. There's not unlimited demand for how many divorces you can have. The same would be true for every practice area. If you're a criminal defense attorney, once you have solved that particular problem, that client has gotten off on whatever charges you've gotten them not guilty and that off they go, that issue is resolved. They need to either be face other charges for them to come back. They're not looking to have another set of charges resolved. So that's a that's a key thing to notice is that in a technical component business, we're only turning the crank once for clients. We need to figure out what we can do perhaps to have other options for them. But really, once we're done solving that problem, we don't need to solve that problem. And finally, our third component are service component businesses. These are different from the other two in that you're paying to spend, to enjoy the time you're spending with that business. Once you go in with a service component business, it really is entertainment. So going to a movie, going to a theme park, you know, you're, yes, you're paying for the access to ride the rides, but really it's not just the lack of access to the thing, but they're putting on such a good show that you're really being entertained and spending your time well. It's all about how you're spending your time with them. So even in hotels, it's hard to transcend, you know, Four Seasons. Ultimately, you're not, you may not be going to the Four Seasons to rent a room just because you want to go spend the night at a hotel if your house works. Those service component businesses, what we're looking at is how the difference between a service and a physical component business is you enjoy the time you're spending there. And so it gets a little gray, you know, the, the theme park, are you paying more for the entertainment than just having temporary access to the rides. Yeah, you know, there's there's a line. We don't need to get into too much. But the important thing to think is 
you, for both those physical component businesses and the service component businesses, you can have effectively unlimited demand. I want to have an unlimited number of Lego Millennium Falcon Ultimate Collector Systems standard sets. I want to ha- go to Disneyland every day, but I really only need one estate plan or one divorce for a technical component business. So really knowing which business are you in. And as a lawyer, you're a technical component business. You know, we can do things to make it easier for our clients. But the key is when we're spending money on service and improving experience, we've only got a few levers. And ultimately, it doesn't matter how good our experience is. It doesn't matter how hard we pull the experience lever. Clients aren't going to come to us if they don't have a problem we can solve. We've got to know what that problem is and how we can make it better for them. And so when I hear things like, we've got a great drink menu, well, that's a good start, but you're acting like a restaurant. And why would somebody come to your law firm for your drink menu? If you saw a Google review for a law firm that said, we, you know, we loved going to John's law firm, they had the best drink menu, that's great, but why did you hire a law firm based on their drink menu? And the next step is, well, what happens when we all have drink menus? Do we then need to up our game and say, well, it's before 10 a.m., you know, if your meeting's before 10 a.m., we're going to have an omelet menu ready to go for you because we're not going to be outdone by those drink menu folks. So, you know, we, we can get into a really worthless arms race on things that aren't unimportant. We should make our clients feel welcome. But when we start pulling hard on that experience level, you know, it's important to recognize that people aren't hiring us for our experience. It allows us to differentiate ourselves within the market, but it's not going to be a reason somebody says, oh, you know, I was just walking down the street and I realized I needed an omelet or access to a drink menu. So I called up Smith and Smith lawyers because they had the best drink and omelet menu in the Tri-County area. I mean, it's just, it doesn't make sense And so we need to recognize that experience and things that go into experience are the drink menus, are the offices. You know, it's not a bad idea, but we need to recognize that that's, there's a line that we shouldn't be crossing in expectations. So we've been talking about product. Product is the line where that's what clients are paying us for. They are paying for that combination of physical, technical, and service components. But that's not everything that a client receives because Before they've hired us, we're sending out other things that are part of that experience. What is part of that experience? Two big things, marketing and sales. These are experiences that clients have with us that they're not paying for. And this is an important distinction. Before we've been engaged, clients aren't paying us, obviously. We're paying them in multiple different forms. Now, of course, there's the obvious, you know, we're shelling out money for a website, the time we spend on social media, what we spend to create products uh, to entice them to come see us. Other things that go into that pre-sale cost. Well, if you're spending money to send a gift, some sort of swag to clients before they sign up, that's part of your cost that you're sending to them. That's part of experience, but clients aren't directly paying for that. So if you go in and you send a $5 Starbucks gift cards to somebody, that's part of their experience. But all you've done is increase your marketing or sales budget to give something to the client. They're not coming to you for $5 of Starbucks. They could have gone and spent their own $5 on Starbucks by themselves. And so it's important to see, well, when you're sending things to clients, you know, note the $5 gift card doesn't get involved in your legal representation. If you never sent them a $5 gift card for Starbucks, your legal services really shouldn't be affected. It really, there's no part of that representation that that gift card would affect. And so recognizing clients aren't paying for that gift card, you're using it as an inducement to come and work with you. So two things I mentioned, marketing and sales. Marketing is the first part of the sales process and what it is, or you know, people who know more about this will probably have much better definitions of it. But the way I like to think about marketing is it's everything we do to create impressions and inform potential clients about who we are and what we do. It's a broad-based way of communicating to people where it's non-specific. We're not talking to anybody in particular about what we're doing. We're just getting our message out. So social media, writing articles, appearing on YouTube, these are things we do to let people know, hey, we exist and here's a problem we solve. Sales is not the same thing. Sales is where we take that interest and we turn them into a paying client. So part one, 
let people know we exist. Part two, once they've expressed interest, if they've raised their hand and said, yes, I'm interested in what you're selling, sales is where we've got a different process and a different mindset because we're converting that interest into dollars in our bank. And so how do we contextualize that $5 gift card? Well, if we're just walking around, you know, pre-printing gift cards from Starbucks and just leaving them everywhere taped to our business cards, that's just marketing. Non-specific, we're letting people know, hey, we exist. Maybe somebody who likes Starbucks will come and pick up pick up the phone, give us a call because they like Starbucks too. And oh, I see you solved this problem. If we've converted, you know, if we've started talking to them and we're thinking, oh, well, you know, Joe and Jane Smith may be good clients. I had a good call with them. Maybe I'm going to send them a $5 gift card so that they have good thoughts about me. And then they're induced to reciprocate because I sent them a $5 gift card. Then they're going to hire me to do legal work. Well, that's then sales. You know, we're, we're sending them something as part of converting them. It's no different than any other, you know, if you go online and they say, buy this, you know, spend $30 and we'll send you this. That's a sales spend or a discount. You know, if to get you to buy, we're going to discount our prices so that, you come and work with us. We want to try and get you through the door. And so it's important to realize those are all parts of the experience, but they're not part of service. That service really is when they're paying for, when the client is paying for something, how are we delivering those items, that physical and technical product to our clients? We need to focus and make sure that we're really taking care of what people are paying for. So, you know, physical product, Bringing it back to that story about the the lawyer who has the custom drink menu. It's not unimportant. That's part of the product that we're selling. But as a lawyer, why should we be selling in the market of having a custom drink menu? Spending firm time, effort, and resources to create a menu, make sure that we send people to the store to get whatever it is they need. If that's not what clients are here for, that most clients aren't really going to care if you don't have that custom drink menu and clients who come to you just for the drink menu maybe aren't coming to you for the reason they should because as lawyers we're supposed to be experts in things we're, you know specifically solving problems clients hire us to solve particular problems to move the needle on those problems we need to make sure that we're dealing with those problems and resolving those issues for them their problem isn't a lack of special drink or the omelet menu it's sue this person, defend me from the lawsuit, get me divorced, adopt this child, create the estate plan. Those are the problems we're here to solve. And so as you walk around, I want you to start thinking about, well, if somebody's here in front of me, what am I actually giving to them? What are they, what am I focused on providing to them? And where does it fall? Is it part of how I deliver my product? Does it really relate to that? Or is it the drink menu that's, yes, part of experience, but it's not really part of my product. And therefore, it's not unimportant, but recognize that people aren't coming to you for your experience. People are coming to you for your legal skills. And the experience is a way that you're just going to separate yourself from your competitors. So we're going to talk a lot more about this. This is all the time we've got for this week. I thank you for joining. If you've got questions, head on over to fivestarcouncil.com. We have a place, uh, the chat bot is there ready to accept questions. We will be answering some of your questions in future live streams and episodes. If you want my white paper on where I think we're going, go ahead and download that from the chat bot there. Thanks so much for being with us. We'll see you next week. Thanks so much for listening. You can find more info on us and get your free white paper on client service at fivestarcouncil.com. You can get in touch with me at john at fivestarcouncil.com. If you enjoyed the podcast, please subscribe wherever fine podcasts are found and leave us a review wherever you can.